those are some loud crickets. If you don't have a loud farm though, that's, that's a bad sign. Anyway, hey you all, Farmer Jesse here. Today I want to talk a little bit about tools. We've used some new ones in our no-till system this year. Um, as our no-till system develops and if, as we've tried different no-till systems, our old tools look a little different, um, are used a little different. So I wanna talk about some of the things that are working really well for us, some that don't work as well in our system, and then also just some that are kind of on the border, kind of on the fence about them. So, let's do it. All right, first, if you are not subscribed to this channel, go ahead and subscribe if you are subscribed. Thanks. Also, there are a few tools that I'm not really gonna get into here. I'd be like the wheelbarrow, a bed rake, a shovel. You're gonna need those. I kinda wanna focus more on tools that cost a little money, that maybe are more of an investment, um, and whether or not I feel like they're important. So yeah, let's get into it. First, arguably my favorite tool of the year. The tool that we've used I mean, almost more than any other. Um, the gritter. Fair warning, I have not sprayed it with the rust lubricant, so it's a little rusty, and that's my fault, but I promise I'll fix it this winter. <laughs> it is super rusty, but uh, this thing has been a beast. It's made our spacing better, it's made interplanting easier, because we, ha we can lock down our spacing a little bit more it's just even, we know exactly where stuff is going, we know exactly where the middle of the bed is, and, and not even just the middle of the bed, the middle of the two crops that we just planted. So oftentimes, let's say we're planting kale, we do the, maybe we'll use the three by gritter, we have all three, the two by, the three by, and the four by. So maybe we'll use the three by, and then we'll use that middle line and plant green onions or something down the middle. Uh, super helpful, it's been an exceptionally important tool for us this year and saved us tons of time because usually we'd get the rake out and we'd put the little prongs on it and we'd draw our lines. Don't have to do that. We can put our compost down um, and then run the gritter straight through that and easy. All right, next, kind of a dud. Um, not really a dud, just one it hasn't been as necessary in our system as it was in a tillage system, which is the flame weeder. We have the five torch flame weeder from flameweeders.com. Um, Usually it's good for things like carrots, maybe beets, but our compost system where we're putting over a layer of compost has the same effect. It's weed suppressant. So I don't really have to flame weed. Um, it isn't a necessary step as much as it used to be. Now, one way I'm trying to integrate it is mowing cover crops and mowing things like arugula and then lightly flame weeding that just to sort of cauterize it and then planting into that. So that's kind of a, um, I'm gonna keep it around for at least another year and just see if that's effective. But um, we've had some good luck. We did it in the tunnel where our late cherry tomatoes are. Had some arugula there, mowed it, cauterized it with the flame weeder, and I haven't seen any arugula coming up. So it could be a good baby green bed flip option, but kind of playing with it, kind of not, kind of on the fence about it. I think bed flipping is kind of where a lot of the tools this year that are winners have come in handy. In particular, the weed whacker. So this is just a steel weed whacker um, and it's got this little bush blade on it and we've been able to flip, there we are. We've been able to flip a lot of beds really efficiently with this. Um, it works really well for things like lettuce, uh, anything you really wanna get out of there. I think, I've got another tool that I'm gonna talk about that I think is better for lettuce, but what I think it really does well with is brassicas, thick stem brassicas like kale, collards, brussels, broccoli, that sort of stuff, um, because you have to go just below soil surface to get those to die. If you just use this other tool that I'm about to talk about to do it, it wouldn't work. Um, it'll come back, they'll come back really easily. So uh, let's just talk about that other tool. The flail mower for the BCS, but lowered a little bit. So you see this little round roller, I actually dropped that one level, and so those blades go right at the base of the plant. Doesn't turn over the soil, just right at the base of the plant. Um, and it's amazing for flipping lettuce greens. 
So we have a bed of lettuce. We don't want to just go in and cut each plant out and take it out by hand. I mow it or I sow in between it and then mow it depending on what I want to do, what the next crop is, but I'll just mow it and it's pretty much gone. Now, sometimes I have to pick out a little lettuce. It's not the end of the world. Lettuce is slow growing, it's slow to bolt, it's not gonna cause you any weed issues. Um, so that's been extremely effective. I like that and have also liked it for flipping over cover crops, uh, in particular buckwheat. I haven't tried it on rye and some of the ones that are more readily, will more readily grow back. Uh, but that in conjunction with the flame weeder is kind of something we're going to try a lot next year. Uh, yeah, great tool. Great with that little roller on it. Dip down just a little bit. You want another dud? This thing is the four row pinpoint seeder. Um, and pretty much been useless for us. It just doesn't get the traction it needs in the, our deep compost mulch to do anything. So when it comes to sowing baby greens, there's just not much utility for it. Instead, we've been using what I think is arguably the best tool on the market for anything, the Jang Seeder. Now, I did not always feel that way. I did not use the Jang Seeder. I used the Earthway for years, for 10 years I've used the Earthway, and it's been fine. It's gotten me everything I've needed, except it hasn't. The Jang is just a superior tool, um, especially when you grow as many carrots as we do. Carrots, in I, I say that, I think that tool paid for itself in the first season. And that's just in carrot production, just in the consistency and the spacing on our carrots. I think it's one of those tools that's a hard pill to swallow because it's so expensive. Um, and I also do think you still need an earthway seeder if you want to do cover crops or if you want to do beans or corn or anything like that. Um, you can get the plates for the Jang, so I haven't tried those. Maybe those are just as effective, but I do like that. I do like the, having an earthway, um, but the Jang is super effective. It's just an, an immaculately wonderful tool. I, I have so much affection for it. I think that's one of the best purchases we've made all year. I kind of want to just mention uh, that I haven't really made a full determination on because I think it's one that I really have to trial a lot to make a very thorough determination on. I've kind of mentioned it and alluded to it throughout videos. Um, it's the paper pot system, right? I don't have the transplanter, I have the zipper. Zipper. Um, so I was using this, I bought all the paper pot stuff, I saved my money on the transplanter and bought the Jang instead and then bought the zipper to kind of just see if the paper pots themselves work in our system because you have to have all the things to use the paper pot. You have to have the trays, the spreader, the spreader bar, um, the chains, like all of those things. The dibbler, I mean you kind of need all of these, you don't need the dibbler but it helps. Um, so you kind of need all these things just to even trial it. So I wanted to trial the, paint, the chains, make sure they worked in our system. And what we found is because our compost is kind of dry, it's like this really mulchy material. Um, it wasn't really holding enough moisture to keep the chains wet, so we were having to water them a lot, and then we would get heavy downpours and it would wash the compost away from the chains so they got dried out even more. Um, we could put our compost on heavier in order to accommodate, but then we're then our cost of production is going up and our labor is going up, so it wasn't... I haven't found a way to make it work yet in our system. Um, I'm gonna keep trialing it a little bit, and I also am gonna borrow a friend's transplanter and just play around with that a little bit because with the zipper, it works. I think it works on kind of a smaller scale, um, definitely in tight spots. I don't think it should be your system. I think it'd be really hard to make the zipper in combo with the paper pots a really viable system. Like it still took us, maybe we saved like 10 minutes of bed, which is something, but it's not, it wasn't significant enough for us, especially with the added inputs and having to recompose. Now, if you're doing a till thing or something like that, I think it would be really effective, but I don't know, the paper pot's not necessarily a miss for us. I'm just kind of, jury's still out. Um, in the zipper, I can talk about this for a second, because I think this is actually kind of a cool tool, but we don't do a lot of furrows, so it doesn't have a lot of use for us. One way I was using it in the spring was actually just uh, hilling up the potatoes, and I think that was kind of cool. That was kind of effective when they were small. Um, so maybe for hilling up potatoes or corn real fast, uh, it could work that way. But I was just using this to pull that compost right up against the, the 
plants, and that worked. I mean, it, there was something there. I also saw that uh, Connor Crickmore will use this as a, um, will dig a furrow next to his tomatoes, insert the amendments that he needs, and then cover it. And I think that could be an option too. Or if you're just, if you're just, if you use furrows in your system, we don't really. We usually just press our, you know, just press our transplants into the soil. Then it would be effective there too. All right, one big one. We use a little bit of cell trays. I don't like them. We use the wind strips. I do like those, um, but they're really only for big crops. I mean, they use a lot of soil mix. So like if you're doing cucumbers, or they're great for cucumber, great for cucumbers, great for squash, uh, great for broccolis and that sort of kales, even stuff that you want to get a little bit bigger. Not for things like lettuces, which is what we start most of. Um, so, I, if you know this channel, you know that I love soil blocks. We upped our game and got went for it. I think this thing's like 200 some odd dollars. Um, and I don't regret even a second of it. It's the best tool. We used to do all our trays with this thing. This is like seven times faster. I 90 seconds a tray for this one. I can do like three trays in 90 seconds with this one. So in a tray is like 105 blocks. So, um, it's pretty fast. I love soil blocks, super easy to get out. Um, you need a decent soil mix, just holds together, but really that's not the issue. You just have to have your moisture right in your barrel. And I've done videos on soil blocking, you can kind of look that up. Uh, but this standing blocker has saved my back, has saved time. It doesn't take us any time to do blocks anymore. Um, it's great, it's great. And uh, I think it's probably one of my favorite tools that we bought and it was the most worthy investment. It just saved us a ton of time. It's expensive, but it's a huge time saver. I also just want to give a shout out to this guy here. Here's the thing. This has been our savior for doing pathways. Pathways are, are one issue where I haven't really gotten it down in our climate because the rainfall is so intense here. It just washes out wood chips. Uh, keep managing the paths and stuff. So this has been the best. I have a wheel hoe. Um, I just don't like it that much. I like being able to just go and spot weed something without getting out that big hoe. Like this, I can carry around easily. You know, it's not, I could have multiple, they're cheap. I could just put one in every tunnel if I wanted to. No, I couldn't, that's maybe a little bit more expensive than I could, but I could put one on every end of the farm. So I just have this to go and hit a couple quack grass or whatever pops up in the middle of the, of the pathway. Um, and then ultimately trying to find something more like wood chips or cardboard or something to keep the path sturdy, but I mean, this, even just for spot weeding, we don't do a lot of cultivation. That gets us in trouble. That got us in trouble once this year, but generally speaking, it's like every 10 days. Um, so I think, I mean, I think that's like this, having one of these around as just a great no-till option, also for bed flipping maybe um, while you're saving up money for a flail mower or, you know, a weed whacker or something. This super easy. You can, we flipped lots of beds with this thing. Keep it sharp and just go right at the base of the plant and you're good to go. Anyway, I think that's a good roundup for now. What are you all using? What kind of tools have kind of stood out to you for your system this year? Um, one thing we're kind of thinking about for next year is more cover cropping comes more, with more cover cropping comes more need for maybe a crimper. I may use our power harrow that we still have that we don't really use. Uh, but that's a very, that's like a $2,100 crimper. Uh, so that's maybe not, that's a little overkill probably. So I'm kind of thinking about a crimping system. Um, and we're also kind of just like not using as much mechanization anyway. Uh, so I don't know. I like the weed whacker though. I do like the BCS flail mower. I think there's a lot of potential for that. Um, I've thought about wood chippers, but everybody says they're super loud and that they're not quite worth it. So I don't know, maybe you all have some experience with that. Do you have a BCS wood chipper combo that you like and that you feel like is effective? Um, I don't know. Other than that, if you like this video, like this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, check out this video that I almost had to do and I'm glad I didn't. We'll see you later. Bye. That right there is the second time today that a storm has just passed right over us. Yeah, so let's do it. Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding.